uh, real quick here. My name is Henry Millward. I'm, I'm here at Thompson's in the head. Hi, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, here at Thompson's in the math department. Uh, Candy has made me promise that there is no math. <laughs> um, this is just uh, some, uh, this actually is a, a smaller version of a presentation I gave for the Tungsus Online Instructors Group. Um, we kind of uh, meet once a semester, but do a weekly email, basically exchanging resources that are helpful, say, in online classes. Sometimes we talk about, you know, developments uh, in, in certain online movements, like, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of MOOCs, the massive online yes. course, courses and stuff like that. There's been a whole lot of news generated by uh, by that kind of movement. So, uh, yeah, if, if anybody's interested, please email me um, at hmailword. So it's basically just, you know, uh, a, email, a group email that I send out like, about every week um, just talking about different uh, resources. Um, other thing, if, if you want a copy of the presentation, uh, it's online. And um, I know a lot of you. I'll probably take a picture just to make sure I get it out to you. But if I don't know you, um, you know, and you want a copy of the presentation, please email me at Facebook. Uh, OK, um, the other thing I have to apologize is that I'm not really sure what happened when I wrote my introduction to this presentation. Um, <laughs> there might have been you know, a beer involved in it or something. So it's not going to be really, really I don't know, quite as wild <laughs> as I made it sound. You got this all here. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it, was, it was like the day before I had to uh, submit the thing. And I, was start, I started to write that my, you know, my standard boring, you know, this is what I'm going to do. I'll start here, and I just said, I freaked out, and that's what happened. So we're going to let that be what it is, but <laughs> this is going to be just a fairly straightforward um, presentation. Um, taking you through five things that have made kind of my computing life better. Um, and I, my, my latest thing, I love to find new apps that do things that, um, that I, you know, didn't, I had never seen done before on a computer. Like I ran across this uh, Chrome browser extension the other day. That will um, it, it will take any uh, will take any picture and recognize the text in it and OCR it into your browser. It will also put any text that you want into the picture, so you can yeah. Uh, it's kind of like a just a, a textual Photoshop, but a browser extension, so you don't even have to open up a huge, humongous program to do that. Um, so I love those those kind of things, but. My, the latest kick I'm on is, is sometimes it's just the simple things that make your computing life easier. And as I'm going around, every once in a while I'll be in my office, right, and somebody will call me and say, hey, Andrew, 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 help me out with this website. You know, I don't know why, why you know, Yahoo is telling me, you know, I got to do this thing or that thing. And I'll come in just for a little, little casual tech support. And the one thing that I think frustrates the people that I help more than anything else are passwords. <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and to the point where, to the point where I like, you should try this app. But then they're like, well, I have, I, what do you mean I have to register? I have to create another password? I'm not going to be able to remember that password. Tendry, you know, I've got like five now that, and that I've memorized. I can't, can't possibly generate another one. And um, the, the nice thing is, is there's great tools now to help people um, keep track of their passwords. And, the, the one, my, my, for a while, my favorite one, um, my favorite one was using Google Chrome. Okay, the nice thing about Google Chrome is that what, no matter what computer you're on, if you can open Google Chrome, you can log in to Google Chrome, and it has access to all of your um, passwords, but also all your bookmarks. Um, instead of having to like, you know, I, I don't know if Internet Explorer offers this yet because I don't use Internet Explorer, but. Um, you know how like if you want to bookmark a site, you got to bookmark it on your home computer. At least you used to have to bookmark it on your home computer, bookmark it on your uh, yeah. work computer. Maybe you know there, maybe there was a way to like um, bring in a zip disk and upload them quickly. But um, this just makes it seamless. Everything I'm looking at on my cell phone because I have Chrome on my cell phone. Everything I'm looking at on my home computer. Everything I'm looking at on my laptop. Everything I'm looking at on my work computer. I have access to. 
Not only that, but I'm, all my passwords are autofilled for me. Okay? So for a long time I was using, uh, I still use Chrome, but I was using that uh, password filled in um, feature of Chrome. Uh, but right now I, I've gone to LastPass because there was a, a Chrome exploit. It's, it's not quite as safe as you would want it to be to the Chrome autofill. And uh, so there's two, two really, really good browser extensions for um, autofilling your passwords, and that's LastPass. And the other one people like a whole lot is Dashlane. Dashlane's a little bit more commercially um, commercially oriented, so it, it helps with online shopping. If you want, like to like do that online shopping. <laughs> Fill in all those, uh, those different you know, credit card fields and everything. It will do that for you really, really nicely. So now, you know, whether it doesn't matter what computer I'm on, I go on, as long as I'm logged in, I'm, I'm in Chrome and I'm logged into LastPass, you know, all my passwords are filled up for me. I don't have to waste time remembering it. It also, now I haven't quite got to this level. Um, I don't know if you've heard about that heart, I think it's Heartbleed exploit. And oh, yeah. it's, got a lot of people, it's got a lot of people yeah. thinking about security on the internet. And, uh, and even though the Heartbleed was about, I think, uh, encryption, right? Um, one of the things I started looking at when I was looking at security on the internet was how safe passwords are. And I thought it was pretty good because I had a unique password for every website. I had a little kind of map, it was like a function, right? I could take the name of the website and I you know, had a little mathematical function that would transform it into a password unique to that website. Um, but now the password, uh, the password uh, cracking industry is so sophisticated that even those kind of passwords with you know, numbers and symbols in them and uh, you know, that are unique to each website can get cracked pretty easily. So, what I've heard is the only safe password is one that you basically can't remember. And the nice thing about LastPass and Dashlane, right? The nice thing about uh, LastPass and Dashlane is that they'll generate those nice long strings that are completely unmemorable um, and auto-filling for you, right? So that you don't have to remember. remember. The other cool thing about it is LastPass is free except for uh, your mobile devices. I think it's like $10 to, to have it auto-fill your passwords on. Right price too. Can they get hacked? Yes, uh, they can. Um, you know, anything's hackable, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, like unlike some something like Google Chrome, right, which provides a service and security is like a side issue for them. LastPass, their whole business is security. So even in this Heartbleed, uh, even in the Heartbleed, uh, what is it, exploit? They they use that uh, that uh, protocol, that what, SSL. Um, they used that protocol that had a, a problem with it, but they had like double or triple encrypted their uh, all their info on their servers, so they were completely safe from from it. So, yes, anything anything that's out there can be obtained, right? And it, but it's just a question of how hard it is. So, um, LastPass it'll be like three times harder than it will be to get your password and your account info from Google or from Yahoo or from Facebook. You know, if they go bankrupt and they're not around anymore and you haven't memorized any of your passwords. Well, I'm sure they'll like, next. I mean, I feel like they're always really good about notifying people. I was, we were talking about this app, Bump, that was really fun to use with cell phones in the classroom. Because, you know, instead of having handouts, I would just go in to my students and I would bump uh, them and I would share. Um, the, you said an image or a handout, a document uh, from phone to phone. Um, that was such a great app, but it went under. Um, well, it didn't go under. Google bought it, right, and then discontinued the services. But you know, I had, I had. <laughs> yeah, I used to love Google. Um, uh, I, um, they, I had plenty of notifications, so anything that any contact info I had on there, I could take all of it. I generally find that you know most mainstream tech companies are pretty reputable about telling you with a little heads up if you need to get stuff off there. Okay, and that and the other thing too is like if LastPass goes under, you just go to whatever the yeah, Dash Lane or whatever their competitor is at that point because the need is still there. So even if one of these goes insolvent, you just go to one of those other sites. You generate new passwords because it generates them in a second and memorizes them. 
you can log on to any computer you're on, right? So really all you have to know is, you know, basically your password to get onto your computer, because that's not a browser, right? It's not inside the browser. Um, and you need to know your last pass or dash lane or whatever service you're using the password. And then you can kind of forget about it. The one annoying thing is like some places like Tungsys make you change your password. Oh, yeah, quite frequently. Yeah. Which is probably smart, being that like how many people really have like unique passwords for every, you know. Very few. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they know people like have passwords like password, right? Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah, or one, two, three, four. So I mean, high, a much higher proportion than than you know than than should. So. Um, Tungsta still makes you change your passwords all the time because of that, which is kind of annoying. But you can still handle that in dash line and last pass. And it just makes things a lot easier. To, to use a lot of different websites and places. Any other questions on that? So, the other thing, this is so old school, I'm like almost embarrassed. Um, but, wait your words. That's the gerontologist in the room. Like, <laughs> Maybe, can I just stand in front of it? Uh, uh, <laughs> and you've okay. taken my sociology of aging class how many times? <laughs> We're getting daggers back. There. Okay, oh, so, so okay, the clipboard's a great thing, like, when you're using a variety of services, you're flipping between tabs in your browser and you're copying and pasting stuff. You know, particularly now, like copying and pasting images is so easy. There's you know so much more than just text that you can copy and paste now. Um, but you know, with your traditional clipboard, you just have whatever the last thing was you copy and pasted. And I don't know about you, but a lot of times for my posts and my classes, or I'm putting together a document, I'm mashing together like a variety of things. I'm taking an image. You know, from one place, I'm taking a URL from another place, um, a piece of text from a, a, like a, a post that I wrote like two years before, and, and reworking. So I'll have three different things just to write this one post. And what that involved with, with that, what that was like before was I had to, you know, have all those things open. I would go to one, copy and paste another, and go to the other, copy and paste another. You know, so there was the finding, there was the copying sequentially, and okay, you know. Just way too long. But Clip Menu, basically what it does is it allows you to have, you know, it memorizes like the last hundred uh, copy and paste things. Right? Nice. Yeah, so it, that really sped things up for me immensely. It doesn't sound like a big thing, but yeah, but yeah, it, it's weird how much something that's little that you do quite frequently um, can affect your, the, your, your computing. And uh, the Clip Menu is for the Mac. Um, I've got a link in the presentation to kind of a PC version of it. So if you want to check that out. I haven't used that one, so I can't, can't vouch for it. Um, yeah, my, the one thing, one thing I would really love to find, because I have a Chromebook, which you're just all in browser, right? You're essentially just like having a browser for, for your computer. Um, I haven't found a Chrome extension that's a, um, that has this functionality of remembering like the last 20 times. Nothing that's workable right now. But clip menu is excellent. I mean, a picture is anything. Okay. Any questions there? Okay. This? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like, I don't know if this, well, this does come up actually a whole lot when I'm teaching. Because uh, there's a, another product that I, I might get a chance to uh, show you a little bit. But I create all these little videos for my math classes. At, um, Michelle knows because she uses this uh, app called EduCreations on the iPad where you can take a math problem and just work it and it records your voice um, working through the problem as you're talking about it and, and your, um, you know, your pen strokes. So it's basically like you writing on the board but recorded and something that you can post on the web. So you know, I, I, over the years, over the semesters, I've accumulated a whole bunch of these. So every time I'm teaching like rational expressions, you know, I have to go back in and be like, oh yeah, I created this one, this one. So I find all those different videos, and I've got like eight of them now. Um, and then, like my daughter needs something, or my son has just you know spilled a bag of marbles all over the floor. I got to run out of the room, and I, you know I don't want to lose all that stuff. Or I have to go to work, or I pick up somebody at the bus. Uh, 
Session Buddy allows you to save that group of tabs as just one thing, name it, right? You, want to, you don't have to leave it on your computer. That was my other solution before, which is, I'm not gonna close this window, right? <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, you come back and you can't just always dedicate your time yeah. to, to working with those 20 tabs, and your computer just gets so cluttered and ugly. So the, what Session Buddy does is allow you to save that thing that you were working on, that group of tabs you were working on, um, and name it, and then when you want to come back and work on it again, you just uh, click the button and it launches all 20 of them. So you're right back to where you were. Yeah. Now, and this isn't educational, but the other thing this is really good for is like shopping, right? When you're looking for stuff. Or comparing a variety of different products. Um, it's really, really nice. The one bad thing is that this, um, even though it's a browser extension, is not, uh, does not sync up from browser to browser. So the, you know, the session buddy sessions you have on um, your home computer cannot automatically be ported over to your uh, work computer. So that's one limitation. But it, it is really, really nice. Of course, you can kind of do it through your history. You know, like, like I said, I use Chrome, so all my, my history is synced from my home computer to my work computer. But the problem is I have to go into my history and then open all 20, click 20 times to open all 20 tabs that I'm still working on. Whereas in session by I just click that, that one link and it's like I'm back to those 20 pounds. Does that mean? Can I ask Henry, how do you do this? Like, how do you find this? And where is it? This is a, this is a browser extension session, but I know. What does that mean? <laughs> that means like it's. So what is it? Like, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Okay, so. No, that's a good question. <laughs> So like, here's Google Chrome for me, and, and like I said, the cool thing is I'm actually logged in here, right? Um, I'm logged in, even though this is not my computer, um, and it will erase everything about my session here after I uh, log off. Even I, it has Google Chrome on it, so I open Google Chrome, and I log in, and I've got all my LastPass uh, passwords, and I've got all my plugins um, available to me. So really what it is is like, uh, uh, a browser extension is kind of like a little side program that resides inside your browser. Okay. Yeah, it's basically something that extends the capabilities of your web browser. So you can have a ton of them. Like at my Firefox, I've got 20 probably things in there. That I want to see advertisements. So I don't want to, you know, yeah. block that stuff. Yeah, there's all kinds of great ones. Like ones that'll strip, like I think there's one, one like cleaner YouTube. Mm -hmm. So it'll clean out all the a advertisements on, yep. on YouTube. All kinds of good things. Uh, and going to the Chrome store, right, for, and, and every browser must have, I mean, even in our explorer, even though you can't log in, they've got tons of extensions. Mm -hmm. um, Jason, do you know if you can install extensions on Internet Explorer at work? I don't, I haven't used Internet Explorer in I don't know. I, I, 10 years, probably. So. Wow. Well, yeah. They're working on it, they're working on certain rooms. Yeah. Designated and to be able to have um, Chrome on it and certain. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so yeah. The, the Chrome, the browser extensions for Chrome were really awesome for me because, like now they've locked it down, so you can't, you can't. I used to be able to install uh, programs on my computer. Yeah. No. Like yeah. Now, now you can't install programs on your computer, but I can still have my uh, browser extensions, which act very much. You know, give me some of the functionality that, that these programs would have done before. Like I said, my one regret is I can't get that clipboard memory as a browser extension, even though I could get it as a program for the piece. Um, so, but a, a lot of things have great browser extensions. Most of the uh, services that you use, like you know, Facebook will have them. I have there's a Gmail one uh, that I use a lot. Wherever I'm on a website and I want to remember it, I'll just send it to myself in one click. So, um, um, so what's Oh yeah, so this is kind of another uh, great tool. It's a presentation tool. Okay, I'll um, do my work. What? Are you going to do it? Yeah, we're using we're using Haiku Deck because I didn't know about it until Allison Hunt showed me. So yeah, please. Well, what what I will say about Haiku Deck, not to, to steal any thunder, yeah. but um, one of the. It, it really embodies one of those great, a couple of great principles that uh, web apps have nowadays. One is that it forces concision, like uh, like Twitter. I guess one of the real problems with uh, you know PowerPoint is that there's no like limit on how much text you can put in, and particularly students and, and 
uh, you know, people newer to PowerPoint just put way too much mm -hmm. text on it, uh, right? And so Haiku Deck actually doesn't, doesn't let you do it. So it forces you kind of to have good presentation, uh, uh, that? more effective presentations. The other cool thing it does that a lot of uh, new, newer apps are doing is, um, you know, we for a long time we've been mashing together the web where you know, you're doing a presentation on PowerPoint, so you go out and find a cool image on the web, and you copy it, download it to your computer, upload it to PowerPoint, and use that image or, or the, the text or whatever. But um, what a lot of new new apps are doing is actually providing that search capability inside the app. So for Haiku Deck, what you do is you'll have the slide, you'll say you type in your first slide, that Russian free um, apps or something like that, and um, the it'll actually prompt you for images that they've sourced from the web that are uh, with a Creative Commons image, so you're not going to get any trouble using them, that are related to the text that you put in the slide. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it actually performs like a nice image search for you. That doesn't mean that you can't go out and actually find the images and upload them like the old school way, but, um, you know, it, it kind of sources from the web right inside the app and, and skips that extra step of going to find them. That's cool. Um, uh, but yeah, by the way, um, if you want the link to the presentation, you, you can see I've got some links that you can follow. Most of the apps all have like little YouTube videos that, you know, just like the intro demo of what the app can do. Okay. <laughs> this is, you know, uh, I was talking about ed edu creations is, was one of my w most used apps, uh, and still I use it a lot. Um, the iPad to actually just work through problems and send them off to my students when they can't, um, you know, meet with me personally, or there was a problem that I couldn't cover in class because time ran out. Did you get that? <laughs> okay. Colleen's already downloading. <laughs> um, but uh, Skitch is this annotation app, and there are a ton of annotation apps out there. And I, I've tried a bunch of them, but Skitch really is like just for whatever reason, I don't even know exactly what they've done to make it so functional. But yeah, it just it works well. You can get it on your uh, all your mobile devices. Uh, you can get it uh, on the on your computer. Um, and now they, I think they were bought. They're bought by Evernote. So there's a really nice if you're an Evernote user, there's a really nice um, everything that you Skitch is saved in Evernote for you and. and uh, tagged out and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I don't always use it uh, uh, to make fun of myself. <laughs> Let's see. Here, so this is an example. All the time, you know, particularly like last minute studying, my students the night before the exam or whatever will be working through the sample exams and you know, like, they don't have time to actually get into my office hours personally or whatever. So I just give, you know, tell them to text me. And I don't, it's funny, I don't get overwhelmed. I guess there's not enough of them that have this kind of capability yet or think to do it to, to actually overwhelm me at this point. But, you know, my good students, it really helps them. They'll, they'll be like, I'm stuck on this problem, snap. And I can see their work. And, and very quickly, I can do this like on the couch while, you know, my kids are watching Barney or whatever. And I'll just be like, oh yeah, you know, this looks, overall, this is a really good problem, but you're not, you know, there's one little aspect that you're missing is right here. And, um, and I've got, you know, just, you can see hundreds of, not hundreds, but a whole lot of them, which is really quick to do. I'd just like to say that my daughter took your class last year, and she thinks you are amazing. <laughs> she was so impressed. She's the only one. <laughs> but I she mean, was so impressed. I, I, knew, I, knew, I knew she was coming to daughter's side, didn't really shot that. <laughs> she got called that next week. No, but I mean that was just terrific, and she's—I mean, she thinks that I'm, you know, not as tech savvy. That's not the word she uses, but oh, they're, cool. they're incorrect. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, but uh, she was so impressed with how techy you were in class because she thought that, that was just amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, part of you know the great part of the, I guess the great part of our job is that we do have so much freedom to play a little bit. And I always, I, I try not to go too far, right? Because I mean, you can definitely introduce you know, so much technology in your class that, uh, overwhelming. yeah, it's just too overwhelming and nobody gets hooked up with any one technology, including myself. So I, I'm, 
But I always do, part of the fun for me is like introducing, try to, try to introduce one uh, technology at least a year that kind of enhances class to see. And some of them, of course, don't work out very well. And then some of them are keepers. And Sketch is definitely one of those ones that's a keeper because it really serves that niche where um, Edu Creations, this whiteboard app, really serves a niche of actually doing a full out problem demo where I'm taking a problem and I'm working all the way through it. But there's also a real need remotely to just get a little help. I've worked through this problem and I, I can't figure out, the, the book's got this answer and I think I'm so right on this answer. What did I, you know, what did I do wrong? And Skits just gives me that ability to be like, oh yeah, it's, it's right here. And they don't have to come to the office hours, they don't have to come to class. You know, they can ask that right away. So you're available 24-7 for them? Well, no, no. I, what I try to do is to drive, not drive myself insane like that, because that's another thing. Like, if you're really trying to keep up minute by minute, you can go crazy. Mm -hmm. So what I tell my students is, um, you know, 24 hours. You know, I will always try to get, I try to get back to you as fast as I can, um, but definitely 24 hours. I will at least, you know, maybe I won't solve your problem, but I'll have a status update for you mm -hmm. in 24 hours. Not counting the weekends, right? So yeah. school days on. So you're so texting here? Yeah. So these uh, these these are pictures that my students texted to me, and the cool thing is on at least when you're doing it on your phone is that you can take the picture from text and send it right to Sketch, but mark it up and then send it back to text. It will go right into your conversation. Um, so, like I said, there's a ton of annotation applications, but Sketch just from a, I guess a workflow standpoint makes it really easy. So all your students have your cell phone and you can text back to them? Yeah. yeah. How do you, you give them your number? Yeah. I actually do I too. I really have a problem. Yeah. I have to do. Yeah. That's not for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I totally understand the privacy. But the, the weird thing is, is I've never, I, I started with, with those concerns and I got a Google number. Which is oh. really cool oh. because it protects your actual phone number. Yeah. You know, and you can always, you know, you can block people on your regular phone number, but it's like a, a double layer of blocking, maybe. You know, I can just totally shut them out. So I got a Google number, um, and the really great thing about having a Google number is that all the texts are sent to email, and I can actually reply in email. Where I, oh. I actually reside in email a lot more. Okay. So for the text, the actual textual texting, Google Voice is so much better than, than regular text. Anywhere, um, I even have like voicemail messages transcribed in my email. Um, is it free? Google? Yeah, Google Voice. Although it might be, I, I feel like it's one of those products that Google's oh, yeah. backing away from oh. right now. They're trying to. Well, it's not that they're backing away. They're trying to integrate it into their other services. They've got IM and, and uh, Hangout technology. Um, so I don't know how much longer Google Voice is going to be around. But um, I need I need the rep. To get the pictures, I actually have to give them my real um, cell phone number. But the cool thing is, I've never had a student uh, abuse it. You know, like, what are you doing, professor? It's eleven o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a, this is a different thing. This is actually an event, but I've done this with students where they'll email me the thing, and then you can go in. This is the, the Sketch app, so you yep. can see how I've added in, and this is for planning for a five k run. But uh, same effects. Okay? Yeah. So it's kind of like a web, you're, you're, you're have doing web design with them, right? No, it? no, actually, um, like I said, that was a fact, k Ron, that was just a simple example I pulled up. But I've done it with other kind of writing assignments or whatever. Yeah. They, they could just email it, I could give them quick notes on it. Yeah. That's really so you don't write on it, you're typing notes. Um, right? Well, I, I'm writing, I can do both. Can I can type, okay. and then I can just click this little thing here, and I can, you know, write. I can create some kind of image or whatever. <laughs> So and there's shapes and arrows and like he has up there. So it's easier, I think, yeah. sometimes to be able to do that and do that correct feedback. It, it, I think one of the things that makes it so easy. One of the things that makes it so easy is that you don't have to download after you mark up the image. You don't have to download it and then re-upload it. You just generate a URL for it, you cut, and it's automatically copied to your clipboard, right? And then you just you know send it out to your students in a post. And they, they go right there. Um, so they, they've just thought about the, making a workflow of marking up pictures a lot easier. Um, the, but like I said, there are, there are lots of alternatives to Sketch if, if that's not really fitting your workflow. Um, okay. 
How am I doing? You have 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, yeah, genius can. I'm on the fifth Russian 42. Okay, so perfect. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm done. I think you're done because well, one says uh, 11:30, and the other one says 11. Okay. Let me just say in, in a 20-second blurb, Genius Scan for your cell phone actually makes uh, actually makes scanning cool on your cell phone because it'll take you know one of the problems is the nice thing about a flat bed is that it's perfectly flat and uh, takes it from a 90 degree angle. And I was always trying to line up you know my cell phone parallel to the piece of paper. <laughs> Genius Scan takes whatever angle you, you shoot it at. Like I can shoot uh, Mark's a notebook right here. It'll recognize the edges of the paper oh, and will yeah. transpose it to be flat. That's awesome. That's all, that's yeah. It's really yeah, it's a great app. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. Thanks. And I hope you have a good rest of the day.